Okay, so um, good morning or good afternoon. I guess it's probably morning for almost everybody, maybe just barely afternoon um, from Clean Tech Open here in Boston, Los Angeles, and Phoenix, right? Somewhere near Phoenix? Is that where you are? Okay. Um, so we are going to give you a little bit of a, in New York City, forgot New York City. Sorry about that, Donna. <laughs> so um, there are four of us here. Um, who will share some information about Clean Tech Open. Um, my name is Beth Zonis, and I'm the Northeast Regional Director of Clean Tech Open. Ken Hayes is our Executive Director based in Los Angeles. Jessica Smotherman is our Director of Operations based in Phoenix. And Donna Sanders is our illustrious startup who went through the program in 2018 and did fantastically well. Actually, I think you went through it a couple times and you can tell that story. Um, so what I'd like to do is, is uh, turn, the, turn the stage over to Ken Hayes to run through uh, the, the beginning of this presentation and then we'll do a little bit of a handoff as we go along. So welcome everybody. Go ahead, Ken. Yes, and um, the first of all, welcome to all of you. The, um, I'm excited to tell you about Clean Tech Open. We're in the middle of the recruiting season. The, the cohort is going to launch here in uh, May and June. And uh, so just a little housekeeping reminder, if you have any questions along the way, it, go use the chat uh, feature that's on the, uh, it's in that control pane of go to webinar. And you just type in your chat and one of us will, will address that. So I'm, um, Jessica and I are going to present a little bit about the program itself and uh, we'll take your questions along the way. So Clean Tech Open, and let me see if I get my controls here so I can run, run through the presentation. Uh, basically, our mission is to find, fund, and foster entrepreneurs with big ideas that address today's kind of most urgent energy, environmental, and economic challenges. I like to say that we we kind of combine the environment and business. You know, in the past, you could be a rabid environmentalist or you could be a hardcore business person, but uh, you couldn't necessarily be both. And that has changed. And this is a, fortunately, it's a very positive development for our society. And what we do is we help entrepreneurs create great businesses that are also making the world a better place. I like to say to when, when I'm explaining Clean Tech Open, I get to work with a hundred entrepreneurs and every single one of them is convinced they're going to make the world a better place. And that's a fantastic mission to have. And we we're trying to help as many of them as possible become successful. So we work with companies that are in uh, an early stage of their development. So as you can see on the slide here, we call it early stage. These are companies that are typically in a pilot stage. Maybe they've raised a little bit of seed money, perhaps from uh, angels uh, or a bridge bridge round, but typically they are farther along than if they were just in a university getting grants or bootstrapping, and they're earlier than, they, than going into production. So companies typically have raised less than a million dollars of equity, they have some kind of pilot uh, product or some level of proof of, proof of their technology, but they need to learn how to become better business people and they need to learn how to raise money from professional investors. We work, by the way, with uh, the clean tech incubators and others beyond that. In the Boston area, you might know Greentown Labs. In New York, uh, it's the NYU Urban Future Lab. And they, those, organizations consider us a feeder, a pipeline uh, into them. So we, we view clean tech quite broadly. We work in eight industry sectors, including energy generation, energy distribution, storage, energy efficiency. Green buildings can be include everything from uh, air conditioning improvements to uh, uh, building materials materials, transportation, in particularly the electrification of transportation, uh, agriculture, water waste is a big, big growing uh, area in clean tech, chemicals and advanced materials and information and communications technology. So we actually have startups working with blockchain, internet of things, um, 
a lot of the startups we work with now actually go across multiple of these uh, sectors. And I think that that makes it really fascinating. And it also speaks to the fact that we have access to a breadth of mentors and others that can handle that uh, broad uh, sector uh, scope. So we are the world's largest uh, clean technology accelerator. We've been around, in fact, since 2005. Uh, we are a nonprofit. We are a 501c3 organization. So we are not, um, we're not a profit making organization. We're not taking a stake of every company coming through the accelerator. Uh, we do, some of our prizes are provided as a, as a, as a convertible note, but to just go through the accelerator, uh, there, we do not take a piece of, of the company. We have over a thousand volunteers working with Cleantech Open around the, the country, and we're active in six regional organizations. The Northeast, out of Boston, New York, and California, out of the Bay Area and Los Angeles, are, are the largest in terms of number of companies. But we also have operations in Atlanta, Austin, Texas, Dallas, uh, Denver, Colorado, Minneapolis, and uh, we're bringing on uh, Pittsburgh and, and Philadelphia and Pennsylvania as well. We hold over 100 annual events around the country. We do have a global ideas competition. So we work with uh, accelerators outside the United States and we invite the best of their companies to come to the United States as part of our global forum. And we actually did a global expansion in partnership with the United Nations that ran for several years where we actually ran the Cleantech Open in developing countries. So one of the big benefits of Cleantech Open for an American company is getting exposure to a lot of the international players uh, in, this, uh, in this space. I just, uh, well, I mentioned we have the regions across the United States. For those of you on the line, if you don't happen to be from the Northeast, which this webinar was originally organized by, uh, you would basically pick the region that you belong to uh, as part of the application process. So we call ourselves a network of networks. And, and in the middle, we have the Cleantech Open participants, which is the current cohort, as well as the alumni. We have over 1,500 alumni of Cleantech Open, again, going back to 2005. And the, our alum, we have alumni who have uh, gone, whose companies have gone public, who sold to large corporations, who are uh, really uh, in, in much more advanced stages of, of clean tech production, great success stories. We are all together in the center of this, this network, along with the volunteers, uh, the mentors, and the judges who work with us. And I'll explain who those people are in a moment. But we work with venture capital firms, with uh, the national labs. A good example is NREL, the National Renewable Energy Lab in, in Golden, Colorado. We work with service providers such as law firms, accounting firms, uh, intellectual property uh, firms. We work with large corporations. Think of a Dow Chemical, for example, or other large corporations that are trying to tap into the innovation that's going on. We work with utilities, uh, both gas and electric. Uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, I'm gonna be on their, at their headquarters tomorrow in San Francisco, uh, working with uh, them. They, they use Cleantech Open for scouting uh, emerging companies. And they also help Cleantech Open companies learn how to sell into a regulated uh, environment like uh, municipal utilities. We do take some money from individual donors, but frankly, most of Cleantech Open is funded from foundations. And foundations uh, are large corporates, such as the Wells Fargo Environmental Affairs Foundation, as well as FedEx are our two largest national sponsors. And we do work a lot with government. In California, for example, we work with uh, the California Clean Energy Fund, which is uh, funded by the state of California and run by the state, and is, has a mandate to promote innovation and startups. And we help facilitate all of those kinds of contacts. So the key activities in our accelerator in the course, uh, and I'll get to the timeline in just a moment, or actually Jessica will, but the there's basically four big areas uh, of activities that, that you work with. The first one is training. And this includes the National Academies. We call them a boot camp. It's a two to three day event. 
uh, that kicks off the accelerator where you begin to learn what what will you learn and you begin to uh, put that the, that learning into practice. We have national webinars, we do regional training, we do business clinics uh, in each of the regions uh, during the course of the cohort where you really get to interact both with the other participants as well as with experts. The mentoring is consistently some of the highest rated elements of our program. Every company going through the cohort, and there will be over about over 100 this year, is matched with two, three, sometimes even four mentors. Mentors are professionals who are volunteering their time. They're usually experts in their field or they're experienced business people. And you can think of it as a desire for them. They, get, they receive no compensation. You're not allowed to pay them. You can buy them lunch or coffee. That's always an appreciated gesture, but you don't pay them. You don't give them stock. Uh, they are doing this out of the out of uh, karma and paying it forward and helping to make the world a better place. And they work with entrepreneurs to help you build a, a better business. The third element is access to capital. Now, Clean Tech Open itself is not a fund, but what we do is facilitate introductions to uh, uh, venture capitalists and other early stage funders, impact investors, uh, corporate funding groups. And we do that by uh, holding uh, Investor Connect meetings and, and making introductions and basically putting you in touch with the, the right people and the most active players in our space in terms of funding uh, your ventures. And it's not always equity. We also uh, facilita facilitate a lot of introductions to grants and large competitions. A good example is the Innovation Incubator. Short, uh, shortened by IN2, and that is run by NREL in Colorado and funded by Wells Fargo, and they make $250,000 grants for com to companies to get further testing and valid technical validation of their of their products. And uh, there's no equity involved; it's a straight grant. And we, they consider us a great pipeline of great of companies coming into to that program. And finally, our, our key activity, fourth key activity is showcasing. We do this by having regional events, by doing expos where every company is invited to have a table, like a tabletop stand or a booth almost, where you can show off what you have. And we invite uh, um, uh, industry experts and uh, our investors and funders and others to come look at what and meet the entrepreneurs directly. So we do that at, uh, at the regional level as well as at our national event called uh, Global Forum. And we have a pretty strong social media following. We have 30,000 people on our national newsletter. We have nearly 20,000 followers on uh, uh, social media and we promote our companies as uh, we promote all the companies as well. So what do you get as a as an entrepreneur, you're gonna gain insight into your business. You're gonna be doing customer discovery. You're gonna learn about your business from the coaches and the mentors that you have and the feedback that you get from the, from the judges. You will, have a, you will gain a focus on your business. We use a methodology called the Lean Startup where you will learn how to uh, construct the business model canvas as a way to determine your uh, uh, business model and your strategy. We have eight program deliverables, which you will create uh, uh, in the course of the program. And then we help you have structured conversations. So think of our 10 module program as a structured learning where every week you're gonna be focused on another aspect of your business and they're all designed to make your business better. And at the end of the day, what you're gonna get is the opportunity. You're gonna get exposure to the industry, to other companies, to later stage companies, uh, to funders, and you know if you if you take advantage of that and network well, you will absolutely get in touch with uh, with great partners that will help your business improve and and progress. I see somebody clicking the uh, the uh, PowerPoint for me here. Let's see here. So I mentioned the the eight uh, the business deliverables. So these are these are eight things that you'll create in the course of 
the accelerator. We call them the essential business deliverables. And the reason we do that is you're gonna need these for just about any funding initiative. So whether it's your business strategy, an impact statement, and by the way, the impact statement is really a key differentiator for Cleantech Open. We work with the company, with the companies and teach them how to uh, verbalize and document and explain what their impact is on the world, both environmentally and in terms of uh, socially and economically. And uh, this is something that uh, is really valued by the partners. You will almost certainly have to, to have to describe how you're going to improve the world uh, through your technology when you're getting funded. The additional things like customer segmentation, the competitive landscape, financial model, those are pretty straightforward. But again, our mentors help you to create that. And by the way, the mentors don't actually do the work for you. They are coaches and they are facilitators and they are a sounding board and they will help you improve uh, what you're doing, but they're not going to be doing, they're not doing the work for you. At the end of the day, that's you. And that also includes uh, creating a, an executive summary, an intro video, and a pitch deck. At the end of the day, you as the entrepreneur are going to be the ones presenting your, your company. And we want to make sure that you present yourself in the most authentic, but also compelling uh, manner possible. So in the course of the program, it's about 11, 10, 11 weeks long. We have 10 modules. Each module is going to include an assignment, uh, which will be one of the business deliverables typically. It will include some clarifying questions that you can use as kind of a starting point in a conversation with your mentor. Uh, with your mentor, you will be communicating with your mentor every week, with your mentors every week. We include uh, links to uh, resources that uh, will explain more about that topic. And we'll also tell you about the, the guidance for the judging. Now, I hadn't, haven't talked a lot about the judging yet, but at the conclusion of the accelerator, at the regional events, we do have competitions where investors pitch. You could think of it a bit like a Shark Tank uh, uh, type competition where entrepreneurs can win five, ten thousand dollars uh, on the way to uh, competing for the national prize. So you can see the module topics on the right hand side. Again, every one of these topics is designed to or is selected and and to help you make your business your business better. So I mentioned a bit about the mentors. There's typically, we have two kinds of mentors. We have generalist mentors and specialists. The generalists will are, are typically experienced business people. They're entrepreneurs themselves or they have experience in management and they will advise you on all aspects of your business. The specialist mentors are really topic specific. They could be technologists uh, from uh, electricity utilities, or they could be marketing or finance specialists. And those mentors are assigned to your team kind of on an ad hoc basis. Sometimes a mentor, a specialist mentor in sustainability, say, might work with four or five teams, whereas a generalist mentor really typically only works with one team per cohort. So people are always asking, what are, what are the results of Cleantech Open? And as we enter our 15th year, we're actually kicking off a, a large, larger scale evaluation of how Cleantech Open did. So this infographic is a couple of years old, but in the course of 10 years, uh, Cleantech Open served about 1,100 uh, teams that resulted in 844 viable companies across all the categories of Cleantech Open and created nearly 3,300 jobs and had those companies by that over 10 years, it generated over $187 million of, uh, um, of revenue and it raised $1.2 billion of, of funding. So, and they were scattered all, located all through the United States. Again, there's an emphasis on the East Coast and the West Coast, to be honest, but we work with companies all around, all around uh, the country. But we're very proud of the results that we have. As an example of some uh, some other results, you can you can actually uh, go up to Twitter and if you use search for hashtag CTO alumni success, you'll see a lot of these stories. And in fact, uh, alumni themselves will post when they've secured a funding round or secured a large contract or something like that. Here are some of the companies 
that have uh, you know raised money recently, and these are in the tens of millions of dollars. The one of my favorites is Arkimoto, which is a two-seat, three-wheeled electric car that actually did an IPO in September of 2017, and uh, you know, that was at a, they raised $18 million at a $99 million pre-money valuation. So their company is worth over $100 million now. And um, they got, they had great, uh, great use of uh, clean tech open. We're very proud of the, the progress, uh, progress they've made. And sometimes it's important to have, to gain customers, not just investors. So uh, this company, Vironment, which is a water uh, company, won the 2015 Cleantech Open Award in the water category. And they were, their uh, CEO and, and management team were the were on a road show together with other US companies and President Trump when he went on his first presidential trip to China. And while they were there, they sealed up uh, $800 million worth of deals with a building contractor and another $100 million deal with a Chinese manufacturer. So, we see this more and more that our companies from the United States are becoming successful outside the United States. And I think that's an important aspect of Clean Tech Open, that, that we give you that exposure uh, beyond uh, the companies and the people you would meet locally in your local area. Think of Clean Tech Open as a window to the world. Is another another success uh, here from 2012. Uh, the reason we show this example from Vikram and, and his company Energy Sage is, um, you know, Vikram was a uh, an, ex an experienced executive in private equity and strategy, and still he found that it was valuable to go through Clean Tech Clean Tech Open. Since he went through Clean Tech Open, he raised uh, nine million dollars more of uh, funding. And he's now a leading. His company is now a leading player in the in the uh, solar space. And the great thing is, he comes back to Clean Tech Open. So he now is a volunteer mentor. He's a judge. Uh, he's on the mentor selection committee, and he's a, he's an advisor to the program. So we we love to see entrepreneurs that become successful in their companies, and then they come back to help Clean Tech Clean Tech Open. So I'm going to ask uh, Jessica to jump in. Jessica is our director of operations located out of Phoenix and she uh, will take us through some of the the time the overall timeline of the of the program. Thanks Ken. So right now we are in the middle of the outreach phase. This is where everybody should be working on their applications through F6S. The deadline for applications is Tuesday May 1st. It's a $50 non-refundable application fee. Once you've completed your application, it then goes into our judging queue and gets scored and we evaluate whether or not you and the company are a good fit for the program. And we'll make announcements for that mid-May. And then also in May, for those that have been selected, we'll have a candidate mixer. So all the folks that are in the program get to meet each other. And then we start the acceleration phase, which kicks off in early June. For the East, it's the 10th and 11th in Boston. And for those that are maybe not from the Northeast, it would be in the Bay Area, the 7th and 9th. And this is an awesome event. We get to see everybody that's participating in the program. You really get a quick but deep dive into all of the, the big topics that you'll be further evaluating and going through the rest of the summer. So mid-June through mid-August, you really go into those topics that Kim was talking about that reflect the eight essential business deliverables. And those final deliverables would be due in, in mid-August. And then through August, August and September, we have our investor clinics, our pitch clinics, and these are all opportunities to continue to fine tune what you've been working on all summer. And then it ends with our regional mock judging. And the idea here is that you get a preview of exactly what you will be doing for the regional showcase. So there's no surprises. We keep the time periods and allotments for your pitch all the same. You get great feedback from folks that have participated as judges previously. And that ends the, ends the acceleration phase. And then you take that into the showcase phase. And that goes regionally from September to October. 
and you will be doing a, a pitch for your judging to determine who moves forward to Global Forum. And then you'll also get a chance to connect with investors and showcase your amazing company. And then those that are selected as finalists at the regional level will go on to pitch at the Global Forum. Though the Global Forum is for all participants, you should plan on attending because not only is it a chance for the regional finalists to compete for the grand prize, this is where we get the most amount of investors in one place. We have a large expo, lots of networking opportunities, and this will give you insight into not just your region, but what's happening globally. And that will be in November. We're still fine tuning the specific dates. It'll be sometime between the 14th and the 19th of November, as well as the location. So what should you be doing now? You should be working on your application. It is completely editable, and you can go back and fine tune your application until you get to the last point where you submit and pay. Until you pay, your application is not in our system, so make sure you go through that process. Again, it is only $50, and the application deadline is May 1st. And really, we're just looking to make sure you've got some skin in the game, both with the application fee and the participation fee. As I said, the application fee is just $50, and that's per company. And then the participation fee is $13.50 for a team of two, excuse me, and $9.75 for student-led teams. And you would just need to provide verification to your regional program manager that you are currently enrolled in school. And this fee really only covers a portion of the cost for us for what it requires to get you through the accelerator program. It ranges right between $5,000 and $6,000, but because of our amazing sponsors, we can give it to you for you know, just over a thousand. And this covers the National Academy East or West boot camps. You go to one of them. It covers all of the programming around the acceleration phase during the summer, all of that curriculum, business clinics, as well as the regional awards and sh innovation showcases, which are in September or October, depending on your region, and then the Clean Tech Open Global Forum, which will be in November. Now, you do need to cover your hotel and travel to these events. That's not included, but considering all the food that gets included, as well as the programming, for those events that require travel, it really is a great deal. And we have a big thanks to our sponsors and funders that allow us to make that happen. And these are just, just a few of them, Wells Fargo, FedEx, and then a lot here that you probably recognize locally in the Northeast. I think Beth's gonna take it from here. Alrighty, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, so um, so here's the story. So I'm the Clean Tech Open Northeast Regional Director. I'm Beth Zonis, and here's what uh, what we have planned for this year. And I should also mention that um, after all of our acceptances are sent out, we will have an introductory meeting um, at the end of May. So we have two sessions in May for mentors and startups to meet each other. And the one in New York is May 21st. The one in Boston is May 23rd. So you wanna to try to figure out which one you can make, make it to, assuming that you are accepted and you will receive a, um, a special invitation for that. So um, our academy is our two day boot camp, and that is um, going to be a really great time for everybody to just learn like I like to say, all the basics of what we think you need to know to um, to run your own business and uh, and be successful. And we've just um, we just ran a survey and we found that 95% of our alumni say that they are confident in their ability to run a startup after having completed Clean Tech Open. The academy is that first step. Um, then we have our business clinics. We do them in, um, in duplicates, so depending on which is closest to you, you can go to either Boston or New York City. 
And you'll see here we do uh, go to market strategy, social impact and sustainability, finance, funding and legal. We cover a lot of topics there. And then tell your story day is really a chance to pitch in, uh, in different formats. And then your mock judging is, um, is as um, Jessica said, that is a trial run for our regional finals. At the regional finals, that will be in New York this year in, uh, in our region. And that is an opportunity for you to get private judging to showcase and, um, and show off your stuff. Um, and also to compete for um, compete for the regional prizes. And we also have, and the fourth thing is an investor connect where we introduce you to many different kinds of investors, corporate as well as, um, as, well as VC and social impact and others. And then the global forum will be um, very similar in format to the regional finals, but at a national level. So it's a way for you to expand your network beyond, um, beyond where, we, uh, where we are in our region. So the Northeast region, which we didn't actually say yet, um, covers nine states from Maine to Pennsylvania. So I believe that, um, that you all on the call are from, I'm guessing, I think I see some names here, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York perhaps. So, um, but we also cover Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Vermont, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Um, so lots of, lots of different uh, people to get to meet. And uh, it's really fun to be part of the whole cohort. Um, so I think that was my main story here. And what I'm going to do is, whoops, turn it back over to uh, our friend Donna Sanders, who's uh, calling in from New York. Donna was, was part of the 2018 cohort and did really well. She actually started out as a development team in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Went through, so she actually really plugged in, worked super hard, and was one of our winners for the Northeast in 2018, and then went on to be recognized as a national finalist. So I'll let her tell, tell her story about Clean Tech Open and her experience. So take it away, Donna. You have to go off mute. You're still on mute, Donna. Can you Thank hear you us? Thank you very much, Beth. There you go. <laughs> hey, super. Hey, everybody. My name is Donna Sanders. I'm one of the co-founders of Social Solar, and our whole mission is to help people that are in cities, whether they live in apartments, condos, or co-ops, connect with renewable energy. And we do that with a pure software platform. So uh, thanks for the nice introduction, Beth. We did. We kind of started uh, at the very basic level. Uh, in 2017, our team and our idea was not formed enough to make it into the full accelerator. So we were accepted into the company development program uh, where we were paired with one mentor and actually went through all of the modules, uh, the same uh, as the varsity cohort. Uh, we, we, so that was a really good thing uh, because we got a chance to work through everything. And the following year we applied and were actually accepted. And the fact that we had worked through those modules uh, the year previous was really good because then we got a chance to re really dig in on some of the details. So we were matched with four mentors last year and three out of the four still work with us. In fact, um, we still speak weekly because we are trying to get to the marketplace here in the next couple of months. And so Murray Froiken, uh, Paulina Schwartz, and Mark Doxer, I don't know if any of those guys are on the call right now, uh, but they were fantastic mentors throughout the Clean Tech Open uh, programming, and uh, we still work together now. The regional competition was, um, for us, it was, it was really interesting because I personally had some family problems before that, and I didn't really think I was going to be able to make it. And Beth, by the way, for everybody that's in the Northeast, she does a great job with the teams. I can definitely speak for our team, um, basically helping us with whatever we needed and also just being really supportive. 
So we ended up going to the regionals and of course we made it out of the regionals and then went to the nationals and, and Ken and, and everyone out in LA uh, did a really good job at the global forum. Um, this year it was um, uh, a little bit later than it's last year. It was a little bit later than it's going to be this year. So um, we're about three months out of the global forum now and post uh, clean tech open we're doing what most teams are doing right we're working on the access to capital and getting our decks together and getting ready to talk to angels and and grants and things of that nature so i think overall um the the takeaway from the clean tech open i would say that you know if you really leverage the modules and the get in those eight deliverables i think it'll help you a lot as you prepare moving forward and to me, it was really all about people. I, I, I know some people are really shy, especially science people and technical people, but uh, it's really going to be beneficial for you to just uh, kind of break out and just ask as many questions as you can, whether someone's your mentor or not. It seems that most people are very open and willing to help. So I would encourage you to connect and to continue connecting and have as much fun as possible because the fast, the, the pace is super, super fast. So be ready to work really hard. That's it, guys. Thank you so much, Donna. That was uh, really helpful. And um, yeah, I, what I, I probably should have said earlier, and maybe Ken said this too, but this is a really rigorous program. We expect people to work really hard and to, uh, to take in a lot of information, assimilate a lot of information, and um, and really expand your networks as, um, at the same time. It's um, there's a lot going on. Um, yeah, you know so, the, the by the way, thank you so much, Donna. And I know you work really hard. The, one of the premises of Clean Tech Open is um, you. It's better to learn quickly if you if you have the potential to be successful. And if your technology has the potential to be successful, then it is to bang your head against a concrete wall for five years or something like that. And this is why it is rigorous, is the sooner you learn those skills and can get the research done and can talk to customers and, and others, uh, the sooner the sooner you will will discover uh, if you have if you and your company have what it what it takes. Um, I, you know, at this time, I'd encourage any of the any of you out on the call to type in uh, or raise your hand or something like that if you have any questions. And uh, we have a few minutes uh, left. We'd be happy to take take some questions. You can type a question or you can raise your hand. I believe. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure where the the hand raising is, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, while uh, while you might be thinking, about it, I wanted to mention one thing that Donna had mentioned about continuing to work with her mentors. And as I said, during the course of the program, mentors are not allowed to be compensated. But it does happen that after the program is over, we've had mentors join board the board of directors of their companies. Sometimes they became, uh, in some cases, they became a, uh, an executive with the company or even an investor, an angel investor themselves. So after the program is over, um, if you're interested, uh, if both sides are mutually interested to remain in touch or even more formally engaged, that's certainly allowed. But it's certainly not a part of the program and it's not allowed uh, to have that kind of, uh, any kind of financial uh, relationship during the program. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I think that's fine. Um, I can also say that we have been recording this call and we will um, we can share it with anyone who's interested. And please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions. We also will be uh, live in person at UMass Dartmouth on Thursday, April 11th. And if you don't have an in invitation for that, let us know and we can make sure that you do. Um, and, uh, yeah, my email is bzonis, B-Z-O-N-I-S, at cleantechopen.org. So, um, 
I guess we can, oh, it's right all right here on the slide. So Ken, Jessica, Beth, and Tricia, we're all listed there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. So thank you very much. Great, thank you everybody. Alrighty, bye.